Hi guys, so we're up to inverse normal distribution. So we've been using the normal distribution to find the probability of something occurring. Now what we have to do is do it in the opposite way. So given the probability, what are the numbers that it falls between? So we have to really carefully read the question because we need to draw that diagram to represent the question. So we've got three different cases. We've got the probability that x will be less than something, equaling something. We've got the probability that z will be greater than something. And we've got the probability that z might be between some two things. But they have to tell us one of these. One of these we have to know. Either this one or this one. All right. Now, the picture that goes with these is that we want to know what the probability, so if we've been given dot, dot, dot as being this, less than this, all right, we want to know what that value there is. What's the value that the probability is this way of it? This one, same thing, but this time the question mark is here are the dot dots. It's greater than this. And of course, in this one, we've got two values, one which is given, one we want to know, and we've been given the probability of between those two. On your calculator, where you found the normal distribution, if you go into that same place and you'll find distributions, so distribution, normal, again, it's in stat, stats mode, all right, push the buttons one at a time. Then when you get to the next one, there are three. One, two, three. We've been using the NCD button. Now we're going to use this one, which says INVN. All right. So if we push that, the first thing it says is variable. We want to make sure that F2 is pushed and that the data is a variable. And then it says tail. Now tail, we've got left right and center okay so left this bit right this diagram center we know one and we're finding the other those are our three situations so the calculator is all ready to go the next thing it says is area and area is a, is the probability So it has to be between 0 and 1, because it's probability. So we want it as a point something something. All right. So, and then we've got the standard deviation and the mean as we would normally have it. All right. So those are the situations we've got. Let's have a look at a question. I'm going to rub this out. So without any words, this one that says, what is, if the mean is um, zero and the standard deviation is one, so that's a standard normal distribution like we did first off, what is the probability of getting less than 1.3? So we'd write that as, what's the probability that x will be less than 1.3? In this case, actually, it's a Z. Why is Z? A Z is standardized and an X is not. But it doesn't really matter. We're not too worried about that. So we need to find out what that probability is. Now, when we're inversing, we don't know that. In fact, I'm not even going to say it is 1.3. What we know is how much is here. We know that the probability is going to be 0 0.078. All right? So 0 0.78 is all of that part under there. This side here, remember it's symmetrical, so this is a half, and this is 0 0.28, not that it matters. Because what we're going to do is we're going to put it in our calculator looking like that. So we're going to make sure that we've got a left tail. We're going to make sure that we put in the standard deviation equals uh, 0, that's the mean, and the standard deviation equals 1. Remember, they go the other way around. So we put the standard deviation in first. Oh, let's write it the other way around. Standard deviation equals 1, mean equals 0. All right? 
And then it says area. So area is the one that we need to put this in for. 0 0.78. Let's go. Dum, 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 dum. Left tail. Area is 0.78. Standard deviation is 1. Mean is 0. What have we got? 0 0.77. 0 0.77. So this number here that we're trying to find, we'll call it K. So the probability of Z being less than K equals 0 0.78 when K equals, and we read it off our calculator, 0 0.7721. All right, that's a standardized case. Obviously, they're not always standardized. So, in fact, they're never standardized. So, if we've got an applied case, it's going to have realistic sort of things. Let's go back to our example of heights and things. So, we had, um, let's stop. We had the uh, mean height at 168 centimeters. Standard deviation was 4 centimeters. I don't know whether it was or not, but it is now. And what we want to know is, we want to know what is the height that 80% of people are likely to be taller than? 80% of people taller than what? Okay, so here's our picture. 168, 50% over here, 0.5, 30% this way, so we've got 0.3 and 0.5 makes 0.8, we want to find K, this height here, all right, so this time it's a right hand tail, all right, so when we put in our calculator we need to put right, we need to put the area is 0.8, the standard deviation is 4, the mean is 168, so the probability that somebody is taller than K equaling 0 0.8 happens when K is what? Alright, so we put it in, right hand tail, area is 0.8, standard deviation of 4, 168, it's 164.63, 164.63 centimetres. So 80% 80, 80 of the class of the group of people is going to be taller than 164.63 centimetres. All right, so make sure that you're drawing the picture so you can see it. Make sure you're writing down what you're putting in your calculator, standard deviation, then mean. Area is always a decimal, so we have to change from 80% to 0.8, remember that 80% divided by 100 equals, and then we'll get our answer. Okay, have a go at the exercises today. I photocopied the actual notes as well, so you can have a look at them as well. See you later.